Sheriff Tov Khabri, Iman Stephen Benun, you're watching Israeli News Live. This evening we have Pastor D with us here from End Time News Ministry uh, online program. There, a very interesting news broadcast that Pastor D puts out. Many of you guys know him. He is uh, from Europe, England. Is that right, brother? Do I get that right? Uh, the UK no. or, or are they all the same? I, I, I never get these right here, but. <laughs> But anyway, Pastor D is uh, one of the things that, that he is very, uh, uh, that happened to him recently, and there's something that is very important to us as well as we report on how the Vatican is very much gaining, uh, not just gaining, they have world dominance. Uh, but not too long ago, Pastor D got a hold of the encyclical before it was made public. And uh, in fact, I even remember seeing on a news broadcast, someone else had mentioned that, and the Pope was very furious that anyone would even speak about his encyclical before it was made public. Now, Pastor D did not publicly speak about it, but he did get it in his hands, and he had shared it with some friends as well, and that got him a present su surprise. Pastor D, introduce yourself to the people, brother, and tell us a little bit about what happened there. Thank you very much for the, uh, you know, for the great introduction. Yeah, my name is Pastor D. Um, my name is Daniel, actually, and uh, I'm running End Time News Ministry, uh, which is, and I'm based in, I'm based in London, United Kingdom, Great Britain, England, whatever you want to call it. I'm confused by it as well. And to God be the glory, it, you know, this is a new ministry that the Lord has just given me. Only ten months ago, we started, and um, my my heart has been really to to preach the gospel. Um, in such a way as to provoke people to preach the gospel and to see salvation, uh, noticing that we're living in the last days. And I started off just looking at the signs, you know, the, looking at the natural disasters, looking at the uh, coming together of, um, you know, the Protestant, the Catholic Church under, under the leadership of um, Pope Francis particularly, and, and all of the, um, on, you know, just the way that sin has been perpetually increased and we're being forced to encourage things. And I was pointing out all of these signs and started doing YouTube videos October 2014. And it grew. I mean, it's not a massive ministry yet, but we have 7,000 subscribers now within the, yeah, as I said, uh, 10 months. And it's growing, and I thank the Lord for that. We're seeing people send. People, obviously, as you well know, they email with many questions, with prayer requests, and, and uh, with much, many info, you know, videos and uh, articles of information asking for me to look at it. I get sent many of your videos, uh, Brother Stephen. Um, they obviously don't think I'm watching every single thing that, that you uh, broadcast, which I do faithfully. Um, but I was sent by somebody, and I wish I had not deleted this email. Um, I, I get so many emails, once I've dealt with them, I tend to delete them. And um, I was sent a copy of the encyclical about a week before it was released. And you're right, I was made aware, I was aware that um, Pope Francis would not be happy um, if I was to, you know, e expose it before it, it was uh, publicly released by the Vatican. And on, I think it was the 17th of June, it was publicly released, was it was the 18th, 19th, something around then. And it was actually published on, that, on their website then for everyone to see. But I had it about a week before. I actually offered it to you, but you didn't read the Facebook message. Uh, so it could have been you, uh, uh, the, the suffering the persecution that I faced. And, and the trial that I faced. I made a video on my End Times News uh, with Pastor D um, saying that I have a copy of this encyclical. I'm not going to quote from it because I don't want to lose my YouTube video, but that if anybody has any questions or wants to see it, and I have to go to the trouble of translating it page by page on Google Translate, 71 pages of it, it took me the whole day. Wow, my um, gosh. Yeah. And uh, so I went, I made this video um, offering you know, for people to see it if they wanted to see it. That was probably not very wise of me to do that. I was just excited and caught up in the moment and feeling, wow, I, I've got a copy of this encyclical. No one else was translating it into English. And um, I spent the next 36 hours answering emails and sending it out to uh, people and, and sort of um, revealing snippets of it. And uh, then the next morning, I was up until about 4.30 in the morning answering, answering emails and sending it out to people. And at 6 o'clock in the morning, the police are knocking at my door. Um, I was fast asleep, and I'm a, I'm a heavy sleeper, my friend. So, uh, <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, but I, I, they did wake up my neighbors. And um, my neighbor, we, we share the same front door. There's two flats in the same building. And um, my neighbors let, let the police in. They were knocking on my front door. They didn't wake me up. And uh, later that day, my neighbors told me that the police had come for me, and they would tell me that I was, that they had come for me, otherwise they would be arrested too. Um, they didn't tell them, obviously, on what grounds they were wanting to investigate me. And that was just a couple of days before the encyclical was released. 
So I was aware that they were, um, that I was being investigated. And then over the next three weeks, I experienced a lot of strange things happening, mystery phone calls, people phoning up, arranging to meet me, and then not turning up. I always took a witness with me everywhere I went. I moved into my sister's house, so I wasn't alone, um, because I, I live alone at home. And uh, I had a witness with me, so when these people would phone up and arrange to meet me, they never showed up, probably because I wasn't alone, I'm not sure. Um, you know, and I, was, and I kept being stopped by unmarked police, I was stopped by traffic by police being accusing me of doing things that I hadn't done, and it was always unmarked cars and plainclothes officers, and I knew I was being followed. I had a lot of strange phone calls that I think were from a private investigator. And after three weeks of this going on, they came and arrested me at um, my place of work. I have a, a secular job as well as uh, the ministry I have. I'm not paid for the ministry I have, so I was, I was working in a local government office. And I had uh, unwisely used the, my computer at my local government office to do this um, translating of the encyclical into English. And they arrested me with no charge, um, but they, I was escorted out of the office, I lost my job, and, um, and I was taken home. They searched my house, they took my computer, they took my phone, they took the church laptop, they took my um, camcorder memory cards, and they took me to the police station, and I was questioned about, um, you know, about my activities on, uh, you know, on, on the internet at work. And um, I was released with no charge, and I am um, to present myself before them again in October after they've evaluated all of my um, computer and, and my phone. So um, I, even with that, the Pastor D, let me ask you this here though. What's interesting though is they're wanting to review everything, but yeah. yet this is solely in their hands to begin with. And th the question that you cannot help but wonder is. You don't have a representative that can sit there and watch over your own equipment and your own information there. You know, they could easily put anything on there they want to and then just come up for a, for a bogus reason to charge you. I mean... You know, I think it's probably... I'm hoping that when... I'm believing that when I go back in October, they will just have to drop it and that they... This is a warning against me, a warning to me to shut my mouth. And I must admit I've been more cautious in what I say and I didn't want to stop broadcasting because then I'll, that, that will just draw attention, you know, as, as if I've done something wrong. Or, so um, I've continued with the broadcast. I'm just more cautious when it comes to talking about the Vatican as to, uh, uh, as to what, what it is I've been saying. Until, you know, this case, until this thing, in, you know, until I present myself back to them in October, they'll find, um, you know, they'll find nothing. I haven't even got the encyclical on that computer. Anyway, I, I've got a printed copy of it here. Um, it's available. It's available to read on the Vatican website now. But I use the work computer, and I think all the investigations that they're doing are actually at the, um, the local government office where I where I work. Amen, Pastor D. You know, one thing that's kind of interesting too, and when we look at what has happened to you, uh, and there's also an American that has faced a very similar situation right now. Uh, I won't speak, won't call his name in the video here, but it, it has been made public. He made it public himself that. Uh, that the, uh, one of the special task force in the United States was wanting to question him because he speaks against Pope Francis, uh, but he's never threatened him in anything that we can, can, can actually see. Uh, he's very much a passive ministry, much as we are, much as you are, Pastor D, as well. But, uh, but even he's being questioned. Now, what's interesting in your case, especially, though, is this has been done uh, with, with no charges, but they just, it just shows the power that the Vatican has in any country in the world. And the United States is no different. They can come and do what they want, when they want, with an in, with, without impunity or anything to invade a person's privacy. Indeed, and we'll see if they, you know, over the next few weeks, as, as I've made you aware, I've got a visitor staying with me for the next few weeks who's a, who's a young street preacher. I'm going to be out on the streets of London every day filming, um, so if they want to come and arrest me, they'll easily be able to find me in Oxford Street and, uh, and all of the places I'm telling people where I'm going. So, uh, guys, please pray for my uh, safety and for the safety of this 18-year-old street preacher that's visiting me from Washington. If they want to find us, they'll find us very easily. Um, Amen. You know, they're preaching the gospel, preaching the truth. We're not going to be out there criticizing the Vatican, but they know that they know that this is my heart, that that's my that that is my belief. Um, you know that. 
they, I can't take back what I've said. I can't undo what I've done. And, and I also have no peace about doing that. I believe that I'm called to, as it says in Ephesians 5.11, I have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of wickedness, but rather reprove them and expose them. And that is what I'm here to do. It's part of the calling that God has given me. And I, um, you know, if, if, if that means they'll take my life, then so be it. I know where I'm going. I'm not too worried about that. Um, Amen. As long as the Lord can use me, please pray for my safety anyway. Amen. Amen. We'll definitely be doing that. One thing, Pastor D, I'd like to uh, bring out to, to the listeners is that when it comes to Pope Francis, and, and, and my wife has even told me, she says, you know, because she's listened to a lot of your work as well. I've listened to some as well. And, and my wife even listened to the other man that's in America, and she says, honey, these guys nowhere near as much as you've given the Pope a hard time. Uh, but one thing I've always made clear, even like when there was a Jewish man in Israel recently that was arrested, and the Vatican's influence was involved in this man's arrest. He's an Orthodox Jew. Uh, he has a group there. Uh, that is very strong uh, about the Orthodox. They want to keep Israel Orthodox. And he made the comment in, in, a, in a public forum there uh, in, in, a, in a yeshiva, uh, which is a, a Jewish uh, school there for, for Orthodox uh, uh, men. But he said, stated in there publicly that all the churches in Israel are, are, are altars to Baal and they should be burned. And they, of course, they, they cornered him and they, they said, you know, are you serious? Are you talking about they should all be burned? And... Um, now, of course, that's pretty insightful when you, make, when you take that type of stance there. Now, I have always said, in sim, sim, similar to that, that yes, the church is there. Is, not all the churches, but like in the case of the Vatican and many of these other churches here that have all these relics and, and idols in there, it is a Babylonian system in Israel, and God doesn't accept that. But as I've always stated, God will remove it, or in this case here, the government should have enough gumption to stand up and remove it themselves. You know, otherwise, when it comes to Pope Francis, my desire is that he would repent. He has a space to repent like any other soul. He has a, he's said some things that are good that I would agree with. You know, he's for the right of an animal's life and things like that. But, you know, the thing is, so was Yeshua. He was as well. And, but to sit there and uh, even like the redistribution, he's talking about one of his things that in one of his encyclicals was redistribution of wealth. You know, Yeshua was for redistribution of wealth, but in a loving way and something that you do of your own free will. You don't have to, but you should have things in common. But so the Pope is the Antichristo, in my opinion, that's my opinion on that. He's like uh, the Messiah in some points, but like in his idea of redistribution is to force it. And I believe, Pastor D, and I'd like to see what your thoughts would be on this as well. I think that the global economic collapse that is coming in the very near future uh, is definitely going to be a way that he can redistribute the wealth by collapsing the world's economies, bringing them all up under a one world government, a one world economic system that the Vatican will actually be the head of. Well, I mean, what comes to mind is that I, I, one thing I often say is that not everything a false prophet says is false and not everything. I mean, I don't mean not just the false prophet, not everything any false prophet says is false and not everything a man of God says is from God as well. So yes, I, uh, you know, I'm, like a lot of probably your viewers were inclined to be suspicious or speculate that he is the antichrist or he is the false prophet or that the Pope at the time will be. Putting that to one side, he certainly seemed to be an antichrist in many of his, uh, at the very least in many of his actions. And that's to work. He has to say a lot of things that everyone's going to like. You know, he, 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 he has to get the, whoever Antichrist is and whoever the false prophet is going to be in these last days, they are going to, um, you know, whet the appetite of the whole world, you know? And in fact, bringing all the churches together, before we go on to the economic, um, I'm sorry I'm not answering your question specifically, but it's what comes to mind, um, is, you know, in bringing all of the churches and all of the denominations and together under Vatican control, it will seem like, to them, it will really seem like a revival is happening. Um, yes. And as those who stand against them are going to really, really be hated and, 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 and you know, deemed to be some sort of dangerous cult, much more of, to much more of a degree than we are now, it, because they will be embracing homosexuality, they'll be embracing, um, you know, all the sort of um, new age religious movements, they'll be embracing all different religions and bring it, and so the church will become massive, you know, and, and it will feel like a real revival is there. He has that level of... And, and that seems to be what's uh, really what's happening. Uh, to go back to your, your actual question on the, the economy, I mean, uh, certainly there's been so many prophecies and predictions 
um, not just of recent years, but you know, going back in history, looking at David Wilkerson and looking at this, um, was it a, a Norwegian lady back in 1979 gave a prophecy of an economic collapse that would come in the end time. There are a lot of prophecies that have happened. Of course, Revelation 6:6 6, 6 talks about the uh, you know um, a, a loaf of bread or a quart of a quart of barley, three quarts of whatever. I forget exactly. Um, for a day's wages, basically. So we know there is going to be an economic uh, an economic collapse. And there has to be, as far as they're concerned, to bring about a one-world economic system. It's going to be orchestrated, and uh, we'll blame it on God, or we'll blame it on God's judgment. And God is certainly going to allow it to happen. So in a sense, yes. it is. I mean, even the, all the false prophets were saying in the churches, they're God's judgment on the church is what they want. They want someone to tickle their ears, you know? So God is going to allow this to happen, but it, I'm sure it's being orchestrated and probably being orchestrated to tie up with uh, blood moons and to tie up with Shemitah years and, and uh, Jubilee seasons and the rest of it. Yes. I, you know, it's interesting, Pastor Dean. I, I haven't, uh, the other day I made a comment about this, uh, this one particular passage that was in a non canonical book, uh, canon book of the, uh, that was uh, at one time actually was part of the Bible there. I, I wanted to say it was in the Apocalypse of Abraham, but I forget which one it was, so I, I can't quote it for sure. I need to refine it, and that takes a lot of work to refine these things sometimes. But there, it speaks about, and I spoke about this in a video not long ago, about the king of the south that actually rose, that will rise up, uh, that he'll come from the south. But it, what I, what's ironic is it says that he will collapse the world's economy with his Roman soldiers. That, that, so, so there's another prophecy uh, that, and what's interesting though is when it says the Roman soldiers, because uh, my personal opinion is, is that NATO is Rome's army. Now, it's beginning to start to look like, and, and of course you're here in Europe as well as we are, uh, it's beginning to look like the way things are going with Ukraine there, uh, that uh, Putin may end up becoming the next uh, Pope's army uh, at, the, at the way it's going because they do have a lot more things in common, uh, communism being the main driving force behind it. Uh, what's your thoughts there, brother? Um, well, I'm op I, I agree with you. I, I do agree with you. I'm, uh, um, I haven't really got anything to add on that. To be I do see, I mean, I noticed you said yesterday and a couple of times recently that, you know, we are sort of, uh, as people who are watching what's going on and trying to decipher it and trying to relate it to scripture, trying to pitch whose side, you know, whose side we're on when it comes to the Ukraine situation, our sympathies lie with, um, with Putin because he's being beaten up by the West and when it, to of course the, uh, the their, our, our apparent support of Israel, although we, we turn against Israel in the United Kingdom, or I haven't, and America, Amen. then, uh, you know, um, he, he is an advocate and, a, and an aide to Israel's enemies. So um, it's all, the whole thing's confusing, like it is in the Middle East. Who is fighting who? You, you know, Turkey is fighting ISIS or they're fighting, um, you know, the, the, the um, PKK, one of the, the tribal people there. And, you know, ISIS are also fighting them. It, the whole thing is a melting pot and a mess. It's so confusing. It's wars and rumors of wars, and it's difficult to pinpoint exactly who's going on you know, we, we, or what's going on. We're looking at Psalm 83 and saying, is this happening? We're looking at um, Ezekiel 35 through 38. Is this what's happening? And, you know, it's really until, until something has become absolutely evidently clear, um, you know, if we see the Pope Francis and, uh, and um, Putin together in Starbucks, we'll probably know that... <laughs> You know, he's his right-hand man, and it's certainly, you know, I mean, Russia appears to be a, a main player in end-time revelation Bible prophecy, doesn't it? So it yes. likes to be the case. Yes, and and, and I, Russia is prophesied as coming against Israel by many people, and that's the understanding yes. of the theologians, and certainly the Vatican will be behind that. So it, it's inevitable, or plausible at least, that that, that would be the case. Right. You know, I see where that could come together as something there. And, and, and the sad thing is, is, and then I want to go back to, uh, in just a second here, go back to the gentleman that, uh, that's also faced a similar situation that you have over comments made about the Pope. But just, uh, just seems we were on the subject here about Putin. And, you know, when I watch the Ukraine situation, because, I, you know, people will say, well, you know, Steve, you're so biased, you know. And, but when I, when I see things, here, I'm an American, love America, you know, but... I saw that my own country was doing something wrong in this case here. But then again, I have to remember the United States, their strings are being pulled as well by someone that's higher up. And it's not, you know, Obama is just a puppet in, in the position there that he's in. And, uh, but I, I watched the situation unfold in Ukraine and I seen, you know, all the Russian speaking people, they're so hated there. 
And, uh, and they just really, you know, it was the, you know, they, they, they brought up the, the fascists and the neo Nazis there, and they, they caused a stir among the people, toppled the government. And, and I don't say the government was perfect by, by a long shot, you know, to begin with, but it just wasn't the right way to do it. And it's clear the evidence was there the United States was involved in that. And so under that, situation there. I stood more for Putin's actions and he seemed to, seems to have shown a lot of great restraint. But that saying now we see all of the forces that are building up over on the border there on, on, on Russia's west there, not to mention uh, we literally have watched the United States build up sending their forces in long before Obama ever admitted to it. Uh, being here, seeing the trains go by with all the tanks going uh, to Poland or Lithuania or something like that. Uh, you know, we see propaganda on both sides. Russia does it. The United States does it. They all do it. But anyway, going back, though, because this is the big thing in, in my mind, because what happened to you in England uh, and what's happened to this, uh, this other uh, brother there that, is, uh, that stands for the gospel of Jesus Christ, for his comments speaking against, uh, uh, and, and to me it's not against Pope Francis, I speak against the system of the Vatican is what I'm more against. A lot of times I'm mentioning by name, like you said as well, Pastor D, you know, he's Antichrist in nature, if nothing else. Uh, you know, if he's not the actual Antichrist that will come, then he's definitely playing uh, as Paul says in the Bible there, there are many antichrists already in the world. And so he's certainly playing that role uh, as far as present tense right now, uh, and, and whether it be false prophet or whatever. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, to see the Vatican can literally exercise power over every government of the world is seen in the case what you've just gone through. Uh, I mean, for just speaking about an encyclical before they publish it and they want to arrest you for something like this, uh, the, the man in America, he, he speaks and he just talks about the, the Pope being the false prophet. And, and you know, I, I can better understand the guy that got arrested in Israel you know, because he says they should burn every church uh, that's in Israel. You know, that's a little bit more blatant when it comes to that. But there again, to me, if there's freedom of speech, and supposedly in Israel we have freedom of speech, uh, then, you know, then, then, you know, the Vatican is the one that was pushing this. And this is what's kind of interesting in the case with the Israeli uh, situation there. The, the, the man that was arrested, even his own attorney said, what are we going to have next? Is the Pope of Rome going to come to Israel and actually indict him as well? This is what the issue is, Pastor D, is the Vatican's influence over world governments and even the local police. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's no sense they're all racing to Rome. And, and uh, we don't have any idea, I'm sure, exactly how, how deep the, you know, their influence goes into every um, department and in, in every nation and every government. You know, through all, especially through, through the secret societies that they are infiltrated, and um, you know, it's crazy. I mean, who am I? I'm just a worm. You know, that the Lord has called. I have a local brick and mortar church um, with a very few members. I've got a small YouTube channel, and I just got a big mouth. That's my problem. I had a big mouth. I was presented with the opportunity, and I know that they want to silence me, not just for what I was, what I did, and I'm sure I may well have been set up. I don't even know who um, sent me, sent me that in Singapore, but for what, they can see my character, they can see your character, they can see our enthusiasm and our, and our determination to bring people on side, to open people's eyes, to preach the truth. The truth is offensive to those who want to live in darkness. So they want to shut us up, and, it's, and I think their, their, their control over, over, you know, right down to as small as we are, uh, their control over us is because of what we will say where we will go. At the moment, well, I have a small uh, following of subscribers on YouTube, but it's growing every day. And, you know, I'm standing out against it boldly now, and I will continue to stand out against it boldly. And, uh, you know, we, um, we we become sort of a personality on YouTube or on or wherever it is that, that um, we're broadcasting. And people love the truth. Those who are seeking the truth, they love the truth. It's going to be attractive to listen to Stephen Benjamin, to listen to, you know, um, uh, Pastor D, to listen to whoever this other gentleman and others who are speaking the truth. And therefore, you know, remember the, it says in Revelation 18, the kings of the earth committing fornication. I believe this is talking about the, um, you, you know, about the Vatican system. And they have their fingers in every government and in every, you know, in probably in the banking sector, in the military, in the police, in education, in the churches, you know, they have their control over, over everything. 
That's exactly right, Pastor D. They do. They 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 control the world so well, and it's obvious that they're wanting to get control of Jerusalem. And and there again, that's another issue in itself that we've brought out quite a bit here lately ourselves. Uh, they, they've taken control of Mount Zion. When me and my wife were doing a, um, uh, an, we were uh, doing an informal interview there with one of the people there at the Temple Institute, uh, because he made a comment during the 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 um, uh, the tour that we had taken there that Jerusalem was not under Israeli control, and that just blew me away. How could Jerusalem not be under Israeli control? Then whose control is it under? Now he did not want to elaborate on this one at all, but it is it is obvious that Israel is certainly under uh, the Vatican's control because they take and throw all of the believers at King David's tomb out, all of the Jewish believers, I should say, uh, in order for the, for the Vatican's people to have a communion service there, a mass, as they call it, the following week. Now, granted, let me just make one thing clear that a lot of people may not be aware of. The, the, the emblem, the, and, and, and I will share this with people on their screen that you can see it. It's called the Messianic Seal. This seal was discovered uh, in, in an area just adjacent to uh, King David's tomb there and the upper room. And uh, th there was a little place, a monk, about a 94-year-old monk lived there, and he had found the artifacts of what we call the Messianic Seal. That's where you have the fish and you have the menorah, and it forms the Star of David together. That was found. There was about uh, 60 archaeological artifacts that were in this one place here. And this is also to be to believed to be where uh, James the Just, the first Christian church in Jerusalem, was there. And historically, historically, it uh, up into uh, 130 years after the uh, in the Common Era, the Christian people still kept control of this area. They were taken out for just a brief period uh, during the 70 A.D. when Titus came down and ransacked Jerusalem and everything. But they came back in. They held it for so long. Constantine though sent his armies down there to kill out uh, all the true believing Christians. And, uh, and even before then, and the Jews, they wanted to silence them there. But, and by the way, historically, it is a fact that King David's tomb sits at the very location where they claim it to believe. And a lot of people are not even aware of that, that that is historically true. But this is why the Vatican wants it. The Vatican knows it's the first temple, or, or excuse me, the first site uh, of, of the early church there. They know this is where uh, King David's tomb was at. It was considered by the Jews that were the, uh, from the Zadok, uh, 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 from the priesthood there, that, this, that Mount Zion was the holy place. Now, I, I did learn one thing that I was not aware of. It's not, the temple did sit on the Temple Mount. That We found historical documentation for that as well. It did sit on the Temple Mount, but Mount Zion was the first church. The Pope of Rome wants this, and he easily came in there and took it. And, of course, the... the, the um, uh, the, the rabbi brother there over the, over the King David's tomb, they were afraid to do an interview with me because why? They had lost the grip of Mount Zion and no doubt they were threatened that, you know, one word to the public and you will not be here any longer. Mm. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's shocking, isn't it? It's Roman occupation of Jerusalem all over again, but by the back door, you know, or even by the front door. They're, being, they're actually being invited in, in some, in some uh, cases. It, it's so sad, you know, um, that, that, that Rome still has the control over David's tomb and over um, Zion and, and over other buildings, I believe, and other, other places, and certainly probably over a lot of artifacts as well they've got hidden away. I mean, I learned from you, uh, you know, from the prophecy in Obadiah concerning uh, Esau and, and, uh, and Rome, uh, you know, being Rome. And uh, it's just, yeah, interesting to see all of this playing out. Really, is in, you know, it's, it, it's incredible. The whole world is blind to it, but it is incredible to see that this is all playing out again. It's a Roman control uh, once again of Jerusalem. It's crazy. Amen. Amen. Pastor D, what uh, is there any other comments that you would like to make just in closing here? Uh, whether it be anything that's going on in the United States, we know that Pope Francis is coming to to speak uh, to the President of the United States to to Congress there. Uh, and as well as to the United Nations, I do believe uh, that we are seeing the New World Order. The, 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 uh, I, I think, Pastor D, it's the implementation of the New World Order. Uh, so I think that some of the things, even like Jonathan Kahn talks about the harbinger and uh, 
and the in the and all of these things coming up uh, very soon here. And by the way, for those that may not be aware of this, uh, we do have what we call the Enoch calendar. And in fact, the the uh, the Qumran community actually went by the Enoch calendar. Enoch, the Book of Enoch, was actually part of their of their uh, books and everything. Uh, but just for uh, something that people may not be aware of, and that is we, even on the Enoch calendar, which is a, uh, uh, not a, it's not like a solar calendar like the Gregorian. It's 364 days in a year. David did his Psalms based on the same thing. He speaks about it in his Psalms, uh, not the ones that we have, but the ones that are in the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's 364 there. But ironically, even according to uh, the Enoch calendar, this is the year that we come up on the Shemitah year, even in the Enoch calendar. So the, the, the lunar and the Enoch calendar are actually, in the Shemitah years, are actually starting to merge together the exact same. Go ahead, brother, I'd like you to tell the last bit here. So nine years since, uh, since Jerusalem was taken in the six-day war as well. I mean, there are so many things relating together in September. And uh, I mean, it's almost risky, isn't it, to make any prophetic or any prediction about September, seeing as we're on the 26th of August, um, you know, uh, a, a, a false prophet or somebody who's going to predict it incorrectly ought to do so years in advance so that he can read it in the meantime. Um, we're only a few days away, so it's going to be a very, very exciting time. But it certainly is absolutely unprecedented what's happening. The Pope yes. coming to America, I believe he wanted to arrive through Mexico. That's not happening, but I believe that uh, to be the case. And um, he, he's coming to see Obama. Um, a lot of people are very, you know, suspicious as to that. Would love to be a fly on the wall. What exactly is going to be discussed? The following day, addressing Congress or both houses. The, the following day after that, uh, addressing the United Nations. This is absolutely unprecedented. And we know that, um, that the United Nations is sitting to discuss the Sustainable Development Agenda. Um, which is basically a one-world document in waiting. I mean, it's another uh, it, it's another step on from the encyclical. It's how we are going to impli uh, apply this working together and bringing in international control um, of things and, and working together on um, things that seem in the surface to be very quaint and, and, and worth doing, like combating poverty and AIDS and all of these uh, and all of these things. And then, is this a prophetic thing that the following day he's going to Philadelphia? I mean, Revelation talks about the church in Philadelphia. That, Philadelphia meaning brotherly love, and uh, being the only church that was not chastised or corrected, really. Um, it, it, what is he trying to say about who he is? And uh, to, to finish on that point, as I learned that um, the Catholic Church in Philadelphia have arranged 30,000 people to create a mural of Pope Francis, and um, they are all painting their little bits, a lot of disabled children getting involved. It's been a very high profile thing. This great big mural of Pope Francis, and it is being displayed permanently on the secondary school of St. Malachi, which is absolutely incredible. Um, so uh, that is just, I mean, I'm sure most of your uh, listeners and viewers will know the, the um, possible prophecy. I mean, there seems to be some credibility to his uh, prophecy. Well, fa fancy putting Pope Francis, apparently the last Pope according to that prophecy, um, his face is going to be immortalized eternally. Uh, on the school of uh, St. Malachi. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Look through my videos. I did a video about that about two or three months ago, or two months ago, I think, um, uh, with more details and some video snippets of this, of this uh, mural being created. Wow. Say, Pastor D, send me a link to that video that you did on there. So when we put this one here together tonight, I will place that in the comment section for people to be able to, to pull that link up and see the video as well. That is just fascinating. Uh, chance. I mean, that whether or not it's life imitating art or art imitating life, are they doing this to create um, an apparent fulfillment of prophecy? You know, who knows? But either way, it is remarkable that that is happening, isn't it? Amen. Amen. So, Pastor D, if you would uh, share with the people, uh, again, your ministry and uh, where they can find you on YouTube, how you're listed there. Uh, it'll appear on your screen as well as Pastor D tells you about this so that you can uh, write that information down, as well as we'll post the link of the video that Pastor D has just spoken about uh, in the comment section there, or not the comment, but the uh, the, the subject line there where you can actually be able to go and click on that directly and get to his channel as well. Pastor D, go ahead, brother. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, if you search me on Facebook, I've only just opened a Facebook page, but it's End Times News Ministry. I've only opened that last week. Um, and I will be posting all of my videos on there and all the links to We do a live broadcast every Sunday evening. Um, it's uh, late in the evening here in the United Kingdom, so it's sort of um, early afternoon in America. 
and um, we're preaching the word, having a time of praise and worship, praying, and also exposing a lot of the end time news headlines as they crop up during the week. And I make three or four, sometimes up to ten videos each week, um, depending on what headlines are, are, are coming out. So I encourage people, you know, get involved. I will also probably answer a lot of the comments. I'll reply to the comments below when, when you upload this to uh, YouTube. So people who comment on your video will be able to find me by, by my comments. My actual YouTube account at the moment has been restricted by YouTube. I'm not allowed to do live broadcasts, so I shall be using a secondary account that I opened some time ago. Um, they banned me for live streaming because apparently I'm inciting violence on uh, YouTube as well now. Oh my God, are you serious? That was happened yesterday. Oh my gosh. I made a video exposing, um, uh, and this video is it, it's all over YouTube, it's all over Facebook, and there's a little three-year-old child who's been trained to be head by cutting the head off the teddy bear. Oh, yes, you, you sent that to me. I saw that. Or, or my wife sent it, or my, maybe my wife sent that to me. Yeah. Well, they, and, and I said, what is going on? You know, this is my cash raise. What is going on? I wasn't glorifying um, uh, violence in any way. I was exposing that this is happening. And uh, at the moment, they, they, they sent me a notification saying that I'm, I'm, in, I'm inciting violence. Brother, all you need...